And so let's now look at that same problem, but in terms of a creative u sub. So I'm going to go back and rewrite the problem. I have the integral of x cubed all over the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. And so here is how is this u sub um, that comes about, that comes into play? So I'm going to put the u sub up first and then I'll tell, to explain the logic behind it. So u equals 1 plus x squared. And the logic behind that u sub right there could be, okay, everything under the integral, we want to look at that. I mean, everything under the square root, we want to make that the u. But if you make that the u, you're going to get a 2x as a derivative, and that only gets rid of one of your x's. And um, so one of the ways that, there's several ways I think you could approach this, but one of the ways is to say, you know what, I have an x squared here in my u. If I could somehow represent that x squared in terms of u, I could kind of get rid of some of those x's. So one of the creative things we can do here, so I would again call this a u sub kind of leveling up because you have to do like an extra step before you even do the u sub. If I make that x squared and say the x cubed is x squared times x, and then I just have my dx still, and then all over the square root of 1 plus x squared, then I see that x squared pop out, and u plus u equals 1 plus x squared. I can also write x squared equals u minus 1, just rearranging it a bit. And so let's go ahead and work with that. So I have du equals, that will be 2x dx. And so for me, the way I work, I, I need to see that as 1 over 2x times du equals dx, and I do that substitution. And so I'm going to do all my substitutions, and I get the integral of 1 over 2x times, now x squared was u minus 1, so I'm going to put that in there. And then I still have that times x and that dx all over, and that would be the square root of u. So my x's um, divide into each other, so I get rid of that single x. I'm left with everything in terms of u, oh, and that's a du, not a dx. So that's a du, because I did the substitution. There we go. And so everything's all set. Now, let's look and see what we have here. That 1 half, I'm going to pull that all the way out front. So 1 half times the integral of u minus 1 all over square root of u, du. And I'm going to look at this as u minus 1, that entire quantity, times u to the negative 1 half because if I could separate this out, this would be very nice. And so u is just u to the 1, and when you multiply with the same base, you're going to add your exponents. So u times u to the negative 1 half, that over there becomes u to the positive 1 half. And that's going to be minus u to the negative 1 half, because you're multiplying it by that 1 in the u minus 1. So I now have the integral of 1 half, and it's uh, the integral, I'm going to separate out the integrals, integral of u to the 1 half du minus the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. And look at those antiderivatives. And again, this 1 half I'll just keep all the way out in front. So u to the 1 half, add that. So 1 half plus 1 is 1 half plus 2 over 2 is 3 halves. So this becomes u over 3 halves all over 3 halves, which you could also write as 2 thirds out in front, minus, and then negative 1 half plus 1 is going to be 1 half, so minus u to the 1 half all over 1 half. Again, we could write that just out in front as 2. So let me clean that up a bit. I have 1 half, all of that on the outside, times the quantity 2 thirds, uh, u 3 halves minus 2 u 1 half. And again, this is all plus c. And let's bring the substitution back in and multiply a few things through. So I have 1 half times 2 thirds would just be 1 third. The u was 1 plus x squared, and that's all to the 3 halves. Minus, now this 2 and the 1 half that was all the way out in front, that's going to make a 1. So minus the one, quantity 1 plus x squared, all of that to the 1 half, and all of that plus c. Now again, this form that I have right now, 
is sufficient. It's fine. It's an answer. But let's see if we could match it to the answer that we got previously. And so looking at this one here, my one half, so if we look at a to the three halves, we can look at this as um, a one half all cubed. And so that would be the same as square root of a times square root of a times square root of a because a to the one half is square root of a. And that would be the same as a times square root of a. So I'm kind of seeing something very familiar here. So this would be one third times the quantity uh, a, which was 1 plus x squared, all times the square root of 1 plus x squared. And all of this is minus the value 1 square root of x minus square root of 1 plus x squared, and all of that plus c. And then again, rearranging, and I'm going to scroll back up to what we did earlier, just because I'm, I'm going to literally be doing the exact same thing. Um, so right up here in my original problem where I had square root of x plus um, of 1 plus x squared and all of that cubed it came down to 1 plus x squared out in front times the square root of 1 plus x squared and that was over 3 that's the same as multiplying it by 1 third the second term was square root of 1 plus x squared I did a 3 over 3 multiplication to get common denominator but this line here of the square root of 1 plus x squared all of that cubed over 3 minus the square root of 1 plus x squared plus c, that's exactly the same as what we have um, right here because we I showed what the square root of a to the cubed is. And so all of this will be the same. And so I could say it matches previous answer. So I'm getting the same answer, but I used two different methods. And if we kind of zoom out here and look, I'm looking at the two methods. Because I tend to write every single step uh, a bunch of times, it's not like it's less work, but I think possibly there's less room for error on the second method because I didn't have to bust out with a right triangle. I didn't have to worry about my inverse tangent. There, I think the complexity of the first method was a, a little bit more. I actually like it though because I do like trig so much. So my comfort zone was actually in the first method, although it wasn't necessarily the most efficient. So that just goes to show you can have the same problem, but do it two different ways and still come out with the same answer.